Hey folks, this video is opinionated in that it contains my personal view on something I strongly believe is contributing, if not outright causing, many of the things that we're seeing these days. I'll also discuss opinions I've formed about other relevant topics. There will be scholarly articles used here that I am limited by license as to how much I can show, uh, even though they may be pay for them. Uh, but I believe the limited educational use of the material that I will show falls uh, squarely within the fair use provisions of the U.S. Copyright Act. Now I'm going to start with the sun's effect uh, on the earth. Now this paper right here um, gives us a good jumping off point, but uh, we can't just rely on this. Uh, as you can see here, it was received and they even received a revised manuscript, but it was never accepted. And there's a good reason for that. They only used 13 years of data. Now they used 22,000 quakes, I know that sounds like a lot, but when you're trying to tie solar activity as a triggering mechanism to earthquakes, you got to use more than just a little over one solar cycle. Now, uh, they did it on a day-to-day -day basis, and they did manage to get a fairly strong correlation uh, when correlating seismic activity to sunspot number, radio flux, KP index, things like that. Um, but this is just a starting off point in terms of uh, their conclusions. What is uh, important about this article is that it puts out some really good theories that are at least sound fundamentally. Uh, about how this triggering mechanism would work. Not as the cause of an earthquake, but just how uh, it could release the pressure. Now, uh, this, uh, you've seen this before, this is what happens when lightning uh, sends up Whistler waves and it's captured by a magnetic field line. Well, same thing happens if it's coming from the other direction, from a coronal hole uh, stream or from a CME. It's gonna get gathered up by the magnetic field lines and inducted into the earth. That can heat up the rocks um, and you know have other kind of electromagnetic effects. The next building block of this uh, that was accepted uh, out of Italy took a look at 90 years of data, uh, looked at VEI level 4 and 3 volcanic eruptions uh, and magnitude 7.5 quakes uh, and higher uh, and took that and correlated it to Waldmeyer's sunspot number. Uh, now the correlation they found is uh, modest, uh, kind of a weak correlation, but the existence of that weak correlation uh, correlation uh, has a very very high confidence interval 99.99 percent certainty so they're just about certain that there is a small correlation uh, and this builds on the idea that you know they don't tr they don't cause the you know these earthquakes to happen out of nowhere but sometimes uh, they can uh, act as a triggering mechanism uh, now what's interesting about this is they found that uh, while 7.5 earthquakes have a weak correlation to um, high solar activity, and by that I don't necessarily mean uh, on solar maximum, but I'm talking about that day's Waldmeyer sunspot number and the days, you know, right around that. Uh, so geomagnetic activity pretty much uh, around that because it is directly tied to uh, the sunspot number as we see over time. Uh, but they find that volcanic eruptions have a uh, more, more moderate uh, correlation to inactivity on the sun. Uh, so we decided, hey, well they're only looking at VEI4 and VEI3, let's look at some of the stronger ones. So you can see over there on the right, that is every uh, explosion VEI5 or higher uh, since 1800. Uh, the list on top is the ones that follow uh, the trend uh, from the article uh, talking about um, you know being at low solar activity and the ones on the bottom are the ones that are, you know, go against the article that happened near uh, solar maximum and high solar activity. Uh, I find it very interesting that, uh, one, uh, I don't know where they get that correlation because it's just about even there. Uh, maybe it's slightly skewed towards the top. But what's interesting is the top is mostly fives. Uh, there's one six, and that's actually unconfirmed. Uh, but down on the bottom, that's where all the bigger quakes are. Uh, and those happened at solar maximum. So I find that very interesting. Moving on. Well, this article is quite convincing. They looked at 70 solar cycles averaging about 11 years each, so more than 700 years of solar data, and once again, uh, they had a very strong confidence of a modest correlation. The correlation value is 0.47, so it's a moderate correlation, and the p-value was 0.01, which is a very high confidence. They tied this in with coronal hole streams and CMEs, and interestingly enough, the increase in frequency did not happen on the day of uh, impact. Uh, but in addition to looking at how this um, 
uh, energy is inducted into the earth and heating the rocks and uh, having other magnetic effects. They propose a dual method of action where this also affects the atmosphere as well. Um, you know, the electric currents going through uh, attract the water molecules. Uh, the heating certainly has an effect on the, the pressure systems over vast areas. And they really correlate it very well. Uh, the earthquake frequencies that they're seeing, they correlate it uh, to um, these atmospheric shifts that occur during geomagnetic activity. Uh, so that's very, very interesting. And this isn't really unprecedented whatsoever. Uh, the method of action for how this would occur is actually well known. Um, and, you know, there's. Uh, a website you can go to called climatelogic.com where you can get a lot of free information you don't have to pay for any of it um, that really discusses how this works and how they're actually expecting uh, with increased solar activity this cycle you know to uh, 2012 2013 they expect uh, to see you know uh, a lot more of these atmospheric shifts um, you know with the, with the westerly winds uh, the western winds is what they, they look for with this um, they really expect to see an uptick in uh, the kinds of activity that we've been looking for uh, over the next year and a half to two years. And if you think about it, that makes sense. How much, you know, pressure must the atmosphere, uh, you know, put forth, you know, down onto the earth or onto the sea? You know, what if this changes uh, sea levels? That could have drastic effects on, you know, how much pressure is on the tectonic plates. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you want to see uh, an example of uh, some scientists trying to tie uh, an earthquake directly to a geomagnetic event uh, using these kinds of things. Uh, this is a pretty good paper right here. Well, essentially we have to come back to uh, the purpose, which is what is happening uh, here. Well, folks, uh, in 1962 when they noticed that the water on the coast of Japan uh, heated up and cooled down, uh, basically with the solar cycle, uh, you know, relatively, uh, they confirmed uh, that with a worldwide study uh, of the same thing, uh, water temperatures from 1961 to 2006. However, in 2007, there was a sharp increase that uh, pretty much persisted, uh, despite the fact that we had one of the longest solar minimums and very low solar activity. Uh, so this is very interesting, folks, and this has just happened in the last few years. Something else is that has just happened since then. You know, this is the all the VEI4 level eruptions uh, since the year 2000. And we should get about one a year, maybe a little less. But since 2008, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Tw you know, there's a couple actually that aren't on here. The Indonesia volcano probably should be uh, uh, labeled four here from this as well. So we have volcanic uh, activity uh, higher than normal, and uh, we should expect that during solar minimum. Folks, what you're looking at here is the predicted value for the uh, critical frequencies in the F1 layer from 1999. This is what they predict it should look like. Now, as we go towards solar maximum uh, in 2002, you can see it increase there. And you're going to see it come back down uh, through solar minimum. And then it's going to rise back up here at the end because we're approaching solar maximum again. And folks, this is what we're really seeing. Uh, this is back in 1999. You can see it does go up a little bit. Uh, and then we have solar maximum and it goes back down. Uh, now you saw how much it exceeded expectations and has been exceeding expectations, but folks, look what is starting to happen in 2007. This would be the third thing that we are noticing happening. This is very strange and this is a juicing up and over ionization of our F1 layer. And real quick for those who don't know, um, what we're looking at in the critical frequencies, technically that is the highest frequency wave that can be skipped or bounced off of that level of the ionosphere based on how juiced up it is. And basically what we're what that translates to here is uh, a serious juicing up of the ionosphere much beyond what they would expect. And folks, I will go as far as to say that this magnetic ribbon that was only recently discovered by Ibex. Now, granted this could have been here for millions of years and we just never saw it. But it, if, it, if it has only been here, uh, you know, recently, then it is undoubtedly contributing uh, to these changes that we're seeing. What this ribbon is, is pressure, uh, just really strong pressure on the heliosphere. And what the heliosphere is, if you don't know, uh, think of it like the sun's magnetosphere protecting us from uh, cosmic rays from the rest of the galaxy. Uh, and other things like that. It acts as our solar system's shield. Well folks, apparently the pressure 
uh, being enacted on the heliosphere is so strong that it is redirecting the solar wind, uh, these charged particles, uh, back into uh, the inner solar system. Now we already know that energetic neutral atoms uh, always, uh, you know, bombard uh, the inner solar system because they are neutral and therefore unaffected by the uh, electromagnetic uh, heliosphere. But in addition to that, we also have charged particles being redirected back into the inner system. Um, there was a pretty good study done on this. Uh, the link will be below, as will a bunch of others. Uh, I really take a look at this one. But there is definitely uh, something that is causing uh, the solar wind to be redirected back into the inner solar system. And just think about the implications uh, that could have. Uh, you know, uh, think about what that could do to the planets. Uh, it might seem far-fetched to you, but this right here is an image of uh, these energetic ions uh, impacting Titan's atmosphere. Now, you can just imagine what that would do to its upper layers, and, you know, uh, imagine if that was Earth uh, heating up our ionosphere, and any energy that gets in, you know, electrostatically discharged up there is going to be, as you can imagine, gathered on the magnetic field lines and inducted back into the Earth. And it would be inducted into the other planets as well. Jupiter, Venus, and the Sun too. Certainly the Sun's not immune from this. Don't forget that 18 months before solar maximum, the Sun had an uh, average monthly sunspot mean uh, that exceeded the experts' predictions uh, for maximum activity for the entire cycle. We're going to go higher. Makes me think we shouldn't be doing certain experiments heating the D region, and I know that there are a lot of you who disagree with my theories on this, but come on folks, just look at what radio waves can do to matter, if done properly. All matter has its own resonant frequency. Use your head. Now folks, there's a lot of information in the information box below. A lot of links, a lot of sources. Um, just like when the experts tell you it will miss, you should look twice. I fully expect you guys to vet my opinions. I almost hesitate to give them because I know there are some who will just take me at my word for it and not do their own research. I really don't like that, but my opinions are these. The solar activity, there is definitely a correlation, uh, a moderate one, uh, between high solar activity and earthquakes and also between low solar activity uh, and at least moderate volcanic eruptions. Uh, these seem to hold true at least uh, until the past few years where we've seen an uptick uh, in volcanic activity. Two of the five strongest earthquakes ever recorded happened the last two years. There's a lot going on folks, a lot to keep our eyes on. Uh, if this magnetic ribbon is something new, it is almost certainly an essential piece of the puzzle. Uh, Welcome to this journey, folks. Should be a good ride. Be safe.